Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Keith Thurman says Terrence Crawford must do something at welterweight to become relevant and get noticed at the welterweight division. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, 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 please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel, donations to Venmo, and the Patreon family. We are working. Now, Sirius XM had a At The Fight uh, podcast with Gary Cooney, and they had Keith Thurman as a guest. He said some interesting things, and I quote, let's see Terrence Crawford do something at 147. Just because he wants to add seven pounds onto his belt line doesn't make him a welterweight if you ask me you know i'm very adamant about what it means to be a true welterweight and to compete against welterweights danny garcia fought me you know i just feel like a lot of kids coming up from 140 when they really go toe to toe with the guys at 47 they'll find out that it's not the same type of division we just have better competition in this division so you know i know terence crawford is a tremendous fighter but i've been saying it and i'm very adamant about it I don't think he's going to have an easy, as easy of a time at 147 as he did at 140, but we'll see. Now, they had a press conference on the same night as the Charlo Lubin fight, and Errol Spence was there, Keith Thurman was there, Lou DiBella, and in that press conference, Keith Thurman also said that basically no one's checking for Terrence Crawford, he has to become relevant first. You know what I mean? In layman's terms, that's basically what he said. Now he's saying this. I want to give my thoughts. Um, I disagree. I disagree for the simple fact is you already look at Terrence Crawford and based on his accomplishments, yes, they are at 140, but usually that as you move up, you, you segue into the new division. You know what I mean? And based on your past accomplishments, a lot of times you get a generous ranking. For example, Terrence Crawford is the mandatory for the welterweight WBO champion Jeff Horn if he gets past Gary Corcoran's belt and they're likely to fight early 2018. So obviously the WBO seen the talent, they seen that he formerly had all the belts at 140 so they gave him a generous ranking. Same thing happened with Jamal Charlo when he moved up to 60. They rated him number two. He immediately, his very first fight, fought the number one guy who had been number one for a while from Argentina, Jorge Sebastian Highland. He won that fight. Now he's the number one rated contender for Golovkin's belt, right? And that's kind of how it goes. So I think Keith Thurman's being a little bit extreme by saying that almost like Terrence Crawford, he's going to have such a hard time and he's not going to be able to, you know what I'm saying? Like he needs to be relevant. I think he is relevant. I mean, same thing with Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia was basically the man at 140, beat Lucas Matisse, beat Zab Judah, right? He beat uh, Lamont Peterson in a close fight. So, based on all of his accomplishments, Amir Khan, he moved up to 47. You know what I mean? People consider him to do good. Same thing with Andre Ward. When Ward moved from 68 to 75, you kind of expected him to do well. And within three fights, he was fighting the number one light heavyweight, Sergey Kovalev, and he beat him. And then he beat him again by stoppage. So, this whole relevant and... I don't know. I feel like it's kind of chastising and taking away from the talent level of Terrence Crawford. Moreover, for me, this is just my opinion. I like Keith Thurman. I always have liked Keith Thurman. But lately, some of the actions, some of the words, the words that are coming out of his mouth don't resonate well with me. You know what I mean? Like, every time Errol Spence is mentioned, it, it seems like there's no urgency. He's oh, he's not a high priority. Like, what is your high priority? Like getting married and being injured for a year. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense. And that's not the Thurman that I grew up, not grew up, but that I watched his career for the last few years since he's, he's rose to championship level. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't make sense. And, and like, this is the thing. If you have all these statements about Terrence Crawford not being relevant, and him having a tougher time at 147 why don't you usher him in you you chaperone him and introduce him in to the welterweight division and you fight him you know what i'm saying because you make it sound like it, the the caliber is so much different 
And I, I, me personally, I don't believe that. I think Terrence Crawford will easily settle into 147 because skills pay the bills. Guys like Floyd Mayweather, they're not the biggest welterweight, you know what I'm saying? And he moved up five divisions, yet his skill set has kept him afloat where he's been able to beat the Victor Ortiz's, beat the Canelo's, beat the Oscar De La Hoya's, Miguel Cotto at their weights and stuff like that, beat Maidana's, but guys that are bigger based on skill. Now, within reason, I'm not saying Floyd could go up to light heavyweight or cruiserweight or some shit and be successful, but Terrence Crawford clearly, to me, has the frame where he could fill out at 147. He has an amateur background with wins. His confidence is steadily growing. So it just, I, I don't agree with Keith Thurman that it's gonna be like, like Crawford's gonna be a fish out of water. That's kind of how I take it. I don't think that. I think he'll be right at home. In fact, the first fight they're talking about him fighting at welterweight, I would favor him over Jeff Horn, who just beat Pacquiao. And I don't think it'll look anything like the Pacquiao. I don't think Pacquiao was hurt, I think in the sixth round. I don't think it'll be all that when Terrence Crawford faces him. But obviously, I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not a psychic. I don't have a crystal ball. So we have to wait and see how it plays out. But one thing I do know is Crawford is always in the gym he's a man determined and it's harder to take a fighter's o and he just has the confidence and and a lot of momentum like this shit seems like it's getting easier for crawford when he fought gamboa imagine if, if crawford fought gamboa again right now gamboa would get thrashed and it wouldn't even be competitive the first fight was competitive but you've seen the maturity you've seen the growth in terence crawford he fought felix diaz i thought he would win, but I didn't think he was going to win every single round and make um, Diaz look horrible. That's a guy with the Olympic gold medal. Same thing with Victor Postal. I thought he would beat Postal, but to knock him down two, three times and make him look like shit and then disappear. Victor Postal disappeared off the scene. So that's how you know how he took the loss. You know what I mean? Because he disappeared for like over a year before he even fought again. So I, I don't really agree with Keith Thurman. I, I don't think... Um, Crawford's gonna have a I've seen the man train and I mean if you really boil it down like Julius and Dongo Julius and Dongo I don't know how much he weighed on the night of the fight but I was at his last fight I was at Crawford and Dongo I was in um, Lincoln I was in Omaha and that dude is pretty big you know what I mean so he might have rehydrated like a welterweight not saying he's the best um, guy at welterweight but even though they fought at 140 he didn't look like a 140 pounder I even talked to Andre Ward because he was calling the fight and he admitted that. He was just like, man, I'm surprised that dude can even make 140. He said something very close like that to me, um, talking about Julius and Dongo because of his frame. Like, damn, this dude's making 140 kind of attitude. So I don't think Crawford will have any problem. But like I said, the easiest way to settle it is if Crawford's so irrelevant and it's a different ball game being at welterweight that you fight him. You know what I mean? And it's it's I'm curious to see it's gonna be all eyes on Keith Thurman to see who he fights next because obviously he's coming off of an injury. We know he's not fighting a champion, Errol Spence or somebody straight away. But people are gonna still wanna see him fight against somebody with some type of name and some type of pedigree. You know what I mean? Especially if you're saying that Crawford isn't relevant at welterweight because he hasn't fought there, then we'll see what relevant opponent you pick. Let me know your thoughts, drop it in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video's Ego, signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Mm -hmm.